Bernie Sanders debated some Republicans on the floor of the Senate, and he did a great job exposing their weasel words and tricks on the issue of cutting Social Security and Medicare. So let's check it out, and then I'll break it down. I will withdraw this amendment. If you can assure the American people tonight that you are not going to cut back, come back to the Senate and cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Can I have that assurance? I would yield time. Good. I would yield time to my friend from Pennsylvania to assure. Now, I see Senator Rubio down here as well. He just the other day, correct me if I'm wrong, Senator Rubio. I know you just walked in and I've got you into this debate. But correct me if I am wrong if you did not say yesterday that the Senate would now proceed to a quote-unquote entitlement reform, which in fact will mean cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And I would yield to my friend from Florida to tell me whether or not I am accurately portraying what he said just the other day. Mr. President. The Senator for Florida. Mr. President, it would uh, surprise my friend to know that uh, in Florida, we got a lot of people on Medicare and Social Security. I know that. One of them is my mother. If I were to cut her Medicare and Social Security, sir, I probably could never see her again or go home. So the answer to your question is no. As I've been clear time and again, I believe that for future generations like myself, there need to be adjustments made. All right. Thank you. But let, me like you. let me quote you. Let me quote you. Let me quote you, Senator Rubio. Tell me if this quote is right. This was a quote that you just made yesterday. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. But as I understand it, you spoke to a group of Wall Street lobbyists, and this is what you said, quote, many argue that you can't cut taxes because it will drive up the deficit. But we have to do two things. We have to generate economic growth, which generates revenue while reducing spending. That will mean instituting structural changes to Social Security and Medicare for the future, end of quote. Now, let me help define what my Republican colleagues mean when they talk about structural changes to Social Security and Medicare. It was that at a time when senior citizens are splitting their pills in half, Republicans will go forward with massive cuts to Medicare. Now, maybe, maybe their idea will be to raise the retirement age to 70, forcing older workers in terms of Social Security to work more before they can get their benefits. Maybe it will be privatizing Medicare and giving people a voucher. When my Republican friends talk about saving Social Security and Medicare, what they are talking about is cutting it. Would the gentleman yield? I will yield. Thank you. I'll yield one minute. Okay. Um, I just want to make a very simple point. Um, the senator from Vermont is concerned that we're going to somehow cut Medicare or Medicaid. Neither, neither word appears in the bill. But furthermore, if that were our plan, this would be the perfect vehicle to do it. It's reconciliation instruction. We could do it without requiring a single Democrat vote. We could do it. We could finish it. We've got control of the Republican House. If we had any intention to do that, this would be the vehicle. But the words don't even appear. What I did say is that when this legislation is passed and you add $1.4 trillion to the deficit, that you are going to come back and cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. So is my friend from Pennsylvania now, and that's interesting, are you guaranteeing the American people that you will not be cutting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? Don't use the word save, because what save means is a cut. Will you guarantee the American people now there will be zero cuts to benefits in Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid? What, but you're not, excuse me, it's my time. I will yield to you. I will yield to you, but let me finish. I yielded to you before. Will you guarantee the people of this country that after this bill passes, you will not come back 
raise the retirement age, voucherize Medicare, raise the retirement age to Medicare, cut cost of living increases by in instituting a so-called chain CPI. Do I have your word on that? So, so I have to disappoint the senator from Vermont by informing him that there is no secret plan to do any of the above. We are not in some process to spring something. If we wanted to make these changes in Medicare and Medicaid, this would be the vehicle because we have reconciliation protection to do it. And you know, let me just be very clear. I'm happy to hear this. Do I have your word now that you as a senator, I know you can't speak for everybody, that you as a senator, after this bill is passed, and I suspect it will be, you will not support any cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Do I have that word I, from I, you? I, I am not going to support any cuts to people who are on the program and need uh, those benefits. There it is. But I want this Reclaiming program to survive. My time. Reclaiming, I'm going to acknowledge that we, we need this time. program for the next right, generation, he too. The, he just let the cat out of the box, or whatever the phrase is. He just told you he's going to cut Social Security. That's it, my friends. He will not cut it, what he just said, he will not cut it for people who are on Social Security right now. I hear that. But if you are 50 years of age, or you are 55 years of age, they just told you, my friend from Pennsylvania just told you, they may go forward to raise the retirement age, they may cut your cost of living adjustment. That is what he just said. That was a masterful job from Bernie Sanders, and I've now seen that clip four times, and each time I get more out of it, because he's so used to having these debates and really getting into every nook and cranny of the discussion that he catches things that even to the trained ear, you might not get the first time. So... This is what the Republicans have uh, done for a while now, is they will frame what they want to do to Social Security and Medicare as, quote, reforming it. Um, or sometimes they say, quote, saving it. And they used to be a little more honest about this and just say, yeah, we want to cut it. You know, or we want to privatize it, is what they used to say. Bush tried to privatize these programs, and he failed. It's one of the few parts of his agenda that he wasn't able to get through. Um, but now they realize, listen, we can't be so blunt with it because people don't agree with us. People don't agree with cutting these programs or privatizing these programs. So then they change the phrasing. So you change the phrasing, you change the marketing. This is what Republicans are so good at. For example, another thing they do is the estate tax. If you notice something, they all refer to it as the death tax. This way, regular people go, oh shit, I die. I don't want the government to take my money when I die and keep it from my kids. Now again, that's all marketing and phrasing, because in reality, the estate tax only applies to people with fucking estates. So these are people who have over $5 million worth of net worth. It's only 0.2% of the, of the entire country. So 99.8% do not have the estate tax apply to them. But the Republicans change it to death tax and then get middle class people think, oh my God, the government's uh, oppressing me. So that's what they do now with Social Security Medicare cuts. They say, Ref uh, oh, we're trying to save it. We're trying to reform it. Now, what Bernie does is he does not let them get away with that. He goes, it, he was proposing an amendment to the Republican tax bill that says, okay, you guys say, oh, I for sure don't want to cut it. So Bernie uh, says, why not make the vote threshold 67 votes or more to cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid? If you guys say you agree with not cutting it, great. Here's an amendment that says, guarantees it. Put it, on, put it on paper. Guarantee it. 67 votes or more to cut these programs. Wow, no Republicans except one. Susan Collins was the only one who said, I agree with Bernie. All the other Republicans were like, no, I don't want to sign on to a thing that says I won't cut it. And then Bernie's like, okay, I'll remove, I'll take the amendment away right now if I get your word that you won't cut it. Will you give me your word? They can't even give him their word. Because listen to the phrasing for all of that. So his first argument is, Bernie, if we wanted to do it, we could do it right now. But we're not doing it. Medicare, Medicaid, that doesn't appear in, the, in this bill. So what are you talking about? What are you talking about, Bernie? We could do it right now. And what does Bernie say? He's like, no, you're fucking craftier than that. 
because you're sleazy Washington insiders. What they're doing is this tax bill is going to add anywhere, depending on which independent organization you believe, anywhere from $1 trillion to $1.4 trillion to the deficit. This bill is going to add to it. And then what happens is they come back and they phrase it and they frame it as a necessity. Oh, what are we going to do? The fucking deficit is just through the roof. $1 trillion, $1.4 trillion. I mean, gosh, we're in a corner. We have no choice. And it's okay because we're re what we're really doing is saving Medicare and Social Security by doing the changes, by reforming it like we want to. So we have to do it because of the deficit, and really we're not cutting it, we're saving it. You see how this works? This is how sleazy uh, Republican politics works. And then, and then the, the best part is at the end, because this is the part where even the trained ear might not get what Bernie's saying, but... Or might not get what the Republicans were saying there. Um, Bernie says, can you guarantee uh, no cuts? And what's the response? Yeah, I can guarantee no cuts to, quote, people who are on the program now. Y you see the little sleight of hand move there? Yeah, no, guaranteed, no cuts. Marco Rubio did this too at the beginning. He's like, listen, my mother... My mother's on Medicare and Social Security. If I cut that, there's no way she, I'm even, I would even be allowed to go home. I couldn't do that. Couldn't do it. She would, she'd have my head on a platter. So what are they saying? Take them literally at face value. No cuts to, quote, people who are on the program now. So this is, oh, look, if you're 55 or above, you're grandfathered in to the way Social Security and Medicare works now. But for everybody who's under 55... That we're going to do changes, reforms, we're going to save it, cut it. And that's going to be, that's going to apply to you if you're under 55. <laughs> really a job from Bernie exposing the propaganda. Um, and they want to do it, man. Look, these are programs that are the most successful government programs in U.S. history and the most popular government programs in U.S. history. The Republican Party, they know. We can't just cut it and say we're cutting it. Because then the people will despise us and we'll get routed in the next election. So it's all weasel words, it's all tricks. Same thing with this tax bill. They're saying it's a $1.5 trillion tax cut. That's how they're, fr they're framing this bill. What's the reality? It's the biggest tax increase on the middle class in U.S. history by far. Because what happens is it's $6 trillion in cuts. The overwhelming majority goes to the rich. And it's $4.5 trillion in tax increases to the middle class. So they say, uh, tax cut bill, tax cut bill. No, it's a tax increase. It's all in how they, f they, they frame it. It's all in how they market it. And that's exactly what they're working on now with Social Security and Medicare. All their weasel words, saving, reforming, all their fucking sleight of hand tricks. No cuts to people who are on it now. Well, that doesn't mean everybody. That means at a certain age, you cut it off and say, you guys are going to get fucked. The other people are not. And remember, they're robbing you. This is your money. You pay into it. You're getting out what you paid in. That's why the word entitlement is a bullshit uh, word. It's a bullshit descriptor for the programs. You know what it really is, right? Earned benefit programs. Earned benefit. Because you earned it. You paid into it. So... Here we are, Bernie Sanders, it's always, watching him on the floor of the Senate is like watching some sort of Twilight Zone episode or something. It's like you have one man left in the world who makes sense, and he's just having to fucking bat away the bullshit of all of the cretinous people around him who are actively trying to do damage to the American middle class. Okay. Okay. So I've been telling you guys all along that establishment Republicans who claimed to hate Trump actually didn't. And uh, we have some incre 